Hello again. Let's try this one more time. I had um, upgraded my OBS and for some reason it had deleted my microphone. Thank you, OBS. So anyway, I guess that uh, kind of saved me from having that long introduction about the project, but just briefly, I was going to say, where did the project go? <laughs> Just briefly, um, I got over there. Oh, I've got it turned around. <clears throat> this is a new project, excuse me, where we're going to be doing this addition onto this house. And this is just a rough massing model that I did uh, for when I met with the owner online on, on my server. And uh, uh, so now what I'm going to do is that. that they're they're fine with the location and how I'm going to connect it, you know. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> um, in most municipalities, when you're doing an addition like this, there usually the um, zoning actually it would be neighbor, the restrictions on the deed in the subdivision would require you to have this attached. Uh, you can't have ch typically you can't have separate structures on on the same lot if you do they would force an imaginary property line between them anyway and it would force you to have 25 foot setback uh, so in effect uh, you would have to put it 50 feet away I've actually done that before too but people are generally wanting like a mother-in-law suite or some kind of office you know home office situation so they want it to be part of the structure so it has to be connected but anyway, this is just a dirty, down and dirty massing model. So I like to do that first, and then I'll come back and do the uh, using you know my Medik extensions uh, for the walls and roof and the floor and foundation. But I thought it might be nice just to start off on the uh, floor plan. So this is the floor plan we came up with uh, the other evening. And let me check to see if my volume is working. I'm sure it is now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the wall extension here. And a lot of these parameters, uh, you know, once you set them and save them, you don't have to mess with it again. But I find myself being on different jobs all the time. So I'm going to make these a, a nine foot wall. A nine foot wall has studs that are 104 and 5 8, which makes the entire wall height 109 and a, uh, it's really a quarter in real life. It's an eighth. The math adds up to be an eighth, but it, when we get dirt and crud and molecules, you know, atoms between the studs and the plates, it usually ends up being somewhere around uh, nine foot one and a quarter. And that's because uh, the reason there's that extra length on the studs is to give you room for your interior floor finishes like hardwood flooring or tile and then on the ceiling your drywall to still have roughly around a nine foot ceiling and we're going to use two by four walls because we don't have an energy code in this county and this will save them a little money um, and we typically would go up to nine foot with a two by four wall after 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 nine feet say they wanted a ten foot wall we would have to use two by sixes so i'm going to update those two things before i go down here and check the other thing i want to do is put my there's my lap siding that's correct and then my corner trim is correct so i'm going to start drawing right here and i've got myself some offset lines i like my sheeting to be flush with the floor system below that saves uh, money and time because if you let the OSB hang over I'll show you right here oops if you let it hang oh if you let the OSB hang over then you have to extend it down past the floor framing so what we do is we set the wall back a half inch and then we'll, we'll put our OSB so that it will be flush uh, with the floor framing. 
there's no need to put OSB, you know, wall sheeting over your, and you would be surprised how many times people make that mistake. Is my corner trim coming up? I don't know what's happening with my corner trim, man. I'll have to talk with, with Daniel about that. But you can see I'm just going around. I've got on my offset line here. I'm going to take this, put it right there, and... I had started this live stream a few minutes ago, and um, for some reason, my oh well, I told you my microphone wasn't working. I wonder if this has to do with the. I think this has to do with the way the axis, the drawing axis, is set up. You see, when I click on this wall, how the uh, the axis of the of the wall is different. I think I just figured this out. And view axis. Yeah, you see how the drawing axis is here, but I'm drawing the walls on that. I wonder if that has anything to do with it. But let's just go in here and set up this. See if. Uh, Let's select this wall and edit it and see if it's if the trim is turned on. Trim outside corner, yes. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's what this is what this is. If I just draw a wall out here. This is going to be user error on my part. What I need to do is figure out why this drawing axis is. I changed it and it's my fault. And that's why my corner trim is not working. Pretty sure. But anyway, what I'm going to do is go ahead and put the windows in here to show you how easy this is. And I've got a door right here. Let's turn off the walls for a second and I can put myself some reference lines in the center of my door. Is that right? And then I've got these windows over here. Not a lot of windows in this, but she wanted them on the corners. Yeah, so there and there. And I already have one there the other one in the center of this door and then we're going to add a window in the center of the tub just occurred to me so now I can turn my walls back on and I can put some windows in I think I'll put this common window in first which will be a 2846 window and we're going to make it 32. I like that scale of uh, this would be 52. If you do the math, this is almost a golden uh, rectangle, 32 by 52. And of course, we would call this in construction, we would call this a 2846 window, but I have to do it in inches here on this. But it makes a nice little. Um, since this is a 9 foot wall, I'm going to make it uh, both top and bottom on the header build out. And then I want to use a casement window here, casement, and that looks good. And so then I can just go out here. Now you see what's going on here? This, yeah, I've got the drawing axis screwed up. Because I'm trying to put this window here and look at where the windows want to go. So let me see if I can't fix this right quick. If I can't, then I think this is 45 degrees. And I apologize to Nathaniel because this is not a, a, an extension issue. 
this is. Is that 45? Yeah. So I need to get the drawing axis on that. Let's see, which way is north? That's the closest that's the closest way to north right there. That's what I wanted. There. Now. Let's do this again. I'm just going to draw this right quick to see if the trim is working. Alright, so I have this drawing totally screwed up, and I have screwed up this live stream, and I'm just going to, you know what, is anybody watching? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, have, I have totally screwed up. This drawing is so convoluted, I don't, I have no idea why my, and this, this has nothing to do with Medique's extensions. If I go in here and I just draw this wall. So, this has nothing to do with Medique's extensions. This is somehow my, I have got the drawing axis screwed up. Because you can see, even, even now, you see, it's still, this should be, I'll show you what I mean. If I, if I, uh, if I delete this group, and then I regroup it, right? And I delete this group, or I explode it. Okay. You can see that the the axis turns. You see, see how this rectangle is a normal rectangle now, and this is is this three. So anyway, the drawing axis is screwed up, and I'm just going to write this live stream off today because I'm kind of mad at myself, and uh, I'm just going to, I may I may do this, I may not, I just screwed this up. This drawing's gotten so convoluted, and this is why you should really follow some CAD standards, okay? And I have obviously screwed this up. I'm probably going to open up a new drawing altogether and start over. Let's do this. Let's take, let's see if we could possibly salvage something here. Let's see if I can go back to where these walls are not there. Yeah. And I'm going to grab this. I'm going to copy it. Let's start a new drawing. You know, this is, this is embarrassing and it's terrible CAD standards. And this is like a little, uh, a little template paste right, so I want this to be facing 
let's see, I want this to be facing this way. Okay. Now, let's just start. We're in a new drawing, right? So we're going to go up to Medique Wall. And how much you want to bet that that is all it is, is convolutedness. Told you. Told you. There's a corner trim. Told you. You just can't. You can't have terrible CAD standards and then expect everything to work. Okay. And you're saying, why are you telling me? You're the one that screwed it up. <laughs> All right. There we go. Now see how fast that was whenever I uh, was doing it correctly and the wall trim, the corner trim. I knew something was wrong when uh, the corner trim wasn't working. And it was the drawing I had. Uh, I'm pretty sure I had like uh, 50 different drawing axes in that drawing because of all that. Usually what I do is I'll leave that there. I would turn off the, turn off the shadows and turn off the sun and for right now we're going to turn off the walls until I get my reference lines back man I was literally about to lose my mind over that it's kind of funny when you're doing a live stream you know you want everything to be perfect but um, obviously you can't always have your way So I hope everybody bared with me long enough to get through that faux pas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these walls and these windows and doors, and then I'm going to sh show you how easy it is to um, do the roof. All right, so we've got our reference lines here, and we're going to put in a window. And we're going to make it 32 by uh, 52, which is my favorite window because it meets egress. And it also is a golden section, golden rectangle. I meant to make it a casement window and update that. And we'll see. But yeah, these are nice scale. Of, uh, these windows are nice. A nice scale for... Uh, a nine foot wall but you can see I can just go around the house now and put these in and this is where the Medic extensions really shine is you're not only getting real world uh, walls with the framing and the headers and jacks and tees and corners you're getting you know, windows and I mean, all all of that I just did in like three minutes would have taken me eight hours to draw by hand, and I know because I used to do it. I used to d literally draw everything by hand. I would make my own studs. And see, that's that door over there. What I'm looking for is this window. Now, this window is going to be. Uh, it's probably going to be 16 inches. It'll be. It'll be. It'll be 36 inches in width and 16 inches tall. So we just need to update that. And it'll be probably... Um, let's, let's close that. Let's do that again. Window. Because I was clicking around and I lost my, my... Window width, height, 16... I'm going to make this window a little bit higher. I'm going to make it um, I'm going to make it 6 feet plus 76. That's 80. Hmm. That might be that might be fine. Let's see. We kind of want it to be above the shower, you know, the head, the shower head. So I might still have to raise it up a little bit. five feet four yeah I really want to kind of raise it up eight inches but here here's a good uh, 
use of this extension if you go to wall tools and edit opening you just click on it let me get out here where I can do it better wall tools edit opening and highlight it and then click on it and we want to raise it up to like uh, 88 inches see it raised up there and I'm going to talk to them about that uh, because you know I don't think it's going to really hurt this is on the back of the building I don't think it's going to really hurt that that window is higher than the others and these don't these need to be at 82 and a half inches anyway right here so they're they may be a little low themselves six foot yeah they need to be raised up so what we can do is go in and edit those wrong thing here edit openings we can just go around and fix that right quick the reason I make mine 82 and a half is because um, I, I use these um, thermatrue doors and that's that's what I have to make the the rough opening height on them. So, and I may just do this. Uh, I don't know if I want to bore you all with this part. I may just move on to the roof. Eighty-two point five. I just wanted to show you how easy it was to change them. You can see it raising up there. Yeah. And that kind of, it doesn't get it quite up to that level, but it makes it a little better. There's only two more windows. I'm just going to go ahead and do it so I don't have to worry about, forget, I don't forget about doing it 82.5 update. But you see, imagine, imagine if I had to, um, I know there's a way not to have to click on that again. But I'm in the habit of doing it. But imagine if I had to move those man those windows up manually, right? I'd have to I'd have to fix all the siding and the roof, and I'd have to fix the framing, you know. Again, which I used to do. I was a little bit nutty like that. So now we're going to put our exterior doors in, which she wanted to be door. These, this will be a 36 by 80 door header is two two by two two by tens uh, built up let's see uh, both on a on a on an eight foot wall I just use the two by six on the bottom I'll show you what that is that built up a parameter here in just a second and then I'm going to use a here we go a full glass door update we'll put that here like that is that the right hand no nope. so what I'll do is kind of change it without no I gotta select it okay I gotta select that door and I need to change it to a right hand in swing there we go she wanted it to swing that way all right so this one will be also a right hand in swing so we should be good it should have saved I wonder if it saved that setting that 36 by 80 both yeah right hand in swing in swing it'll typically save the last setting so which is handy so, oopsie, where did that door come from? Hmm. We shall delete that door. That was probably a clicking error <laughs> on my part. <laughs> Happy clicks. And that is correct. So you can see that it's really pretty simple, pretty easy, pretty quick. And like I was saying um, before, this. Uh, uh, 
Nathaniel has worked on this a lot. He back in the old days, the siding was just an image that was placed on a surface. Now we have actual line work. And there's a benefit to that because when you start doing your elevations, you get a depth, you get actual depth to it. It, it just looks like it doesn't look like lines painted on a picture, you know, of a surface. It looks so much better. But what I was talking about on these headers is when we have an eight foot wall, we don't have this top two by six. The header just gets pushed all the way up. And I just think it's cool that he has all these parameters where you can make this look real, you know. And see there, see see the difference here? I forgot to do it on these windows. But I can go back in here, and I'll do this later. I just want to show you one edit opening. That is right here. On a on an eight foot wall, it would be set to bottom BTM, but on a nine foot wall, I like to use a I like to use one on top too because you can see the studs hang over past the header if if you don't put one on on the top too. But on an eight foot wall, that's butted up against the the bottom plate. I mean the top the bottom of the top plate. All right, so that is that. Now I wanted to do the roof right quick. And what I may do, is there any, what about cross bracing? Can you put that in this program? Well, I can, I've actually done that before. I did that, I don't know if you've seen my videos for the military, went for Chief Don when I was doing the uh, barracks for him they needed a bracing plan because you know he's actually the guys the troops that are in the cbs are learning they're they're not you know they're 18 19 years old they don't have any training so they are actually being trained while they're in you know in the in the cbs uh, i guess that's the navy um so i did a, a bracing plan for him but normally i don't unless because a lot of a lot of the times I'm the one that's building these things, and I don't need it. They need that, but in that case we did. So, um, if you if you can probably just search um, search my channel for bracing, the word bracing, and it'll probably show up. See now you got me wondering myself. Nope, sorry. What do you mean? What's nope, sorry mean? You don't want to look <laughs> well I'll look how about that YouTube studio uh, bracing yeah brace yourself here we go temporary temporary walls or temporary bracing for wall framing you know what this is this is a lesson that I did for my school of construction and I'm going to so if you go if you go into this video, and I don't know why it's buffering, but you can see here. See, I'm doing the bracing, but we're gonna exit out of that because it's the commercial and nobody wants to watch that. So yeah, I mean I have, um, but again, I won't do it for this because uh, the owner doesn't need it and I don't need it so what's going to brace the walls ultimately is the the OSB that that's its function now I'm going to put these walls in here which will create a uh, shear you know resistance to shear like these walls across here will resist the wind shear so uh, I may just go ahead and do that because there's not that many of them yeah let's do that is that what you were talking about? Didn't see your video bra bracing. Will do. Yeah. And um, that and the reason is is because it's a very long and extensive thing where I, I literally have to draw the two befores because there's no extension for SketchUp for bracing. So I have to draw them and turn them at 45 degree angles and you know place them all along. Anyway, <clears throat> that's actually a lesson plan for my artisan school of construction website which i'm working on so <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> so 
let's um let's do an interior wall I forgot whether I have to do my guidelines or not for this wall and you can change this up here to interior interior so that it's just an interior wall and that's correct 109 uh, got a nine foot wall there nine foot one and an eighth two by fours so this all should be good I'll just update this and um, I think I am gonna have to do my half inch let me let me see yeah I'm gonna have to that's it won't take but a minute to do that I like to go around in a circle or in a loop I guess I should say so I'll do this one half you don't have to do this I just do it because I draw my the width of my walls um, four and a half inches and then I'll come back this way 0.5 then I'll come back this way 0.5 but it only takes a minute to do this and it just uh, makes it easier to snap to where I'll it's just kind of a personal thing it's not required for the extension it's really a bad habit that I've gotten into that's <laughs> what it amounts to <laughs> one half there we go see that didn't take long and then I can just uh, easily snap snap to it now the thing that may be wrong with that picture is that uh, this let me just draw a let me draw let me stick this on in, interior interior right quick and see see if I should be doing that or not because I forgot to be honest with you yeah no that's correct that is correct Bob so I go here I'm on interior interior right yeah and this is why I do it because see I can stop right there and the wall stops right there so I don't have to go out to my line I mean, so that uh, the wall will be in the, the proper place. And what's really cool about this is as you're doing this, uh, the extension puts the T's in the walls where the walls intersect. There we go. And then we'll go over here. Should be able to see this all the way around without having to move. I know it gets annoying doing a lot of in and out. I'm so used to scrolling in and out to get my view just perfect, but I've noticed that that's kind of annoying to people when they're watching. I don't, I don't blame blame you one bit for that. Okay. And then there's a shorter wall here. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and bring it out to there. A half inch isn't going to matter on that one. And does that get our walls? Yep, see that was quick. And then you can go put your doors in. Let's see. Let me close this for a second. Didn't see your video. Yeah, just wanted to check for comments there. Let me... I'm going to have to do some center lines so there's not that many doors so it won't, won't be that hard to do is this a two foot door so 12 and then here this should be 30 so 15 
and then the bathroom door are those lined up yeah all right we'll just do those two just to show you how they work and you know what it looks like I need to move and this is what's good about this extension is sometimes you you realize you need to move your door framing over wall door and here we're going to use a 24 inch door update and then it's going to be we're just going to call it a solid uh, well let's see let's call it a six panel this is an interior door do we have that I think what I'm going to do is say no doors right now on, on the inside uh, just so I don't have to worry about the door I just want to get my framing in there you see and you see now I can see a conflict with my with my layout because I'll have to what I'll have to do is nail the jacks for I'll have to nail the jack for this door the trimmer some people we call them jacks sometimes we call them trimmers um, the jack is the whole assembly and the trimmer is the is the actual piece but you can see here I'll have to nail it on the side of the T the the two before that is the side of the T but that'll be something we'll do in the field in real life we don't have to really worry about that too much here and here wall door are we still on in no door no door this is going to be a 30 inch door Normally, if you had a lot of doors in a house, you'd go around and do all the same door size at the same time. There we go. And of course, we don't have any framing issues there. And then let me de delete the guidelines and I'll start a new one for this door. This should be a 30 inch door also because it's a bathroom door. Yeah. And so I should be able to just use the last setting. Well, didn't save it. No big deal. We can fix that. There we go. And you can see the rough opening is built in. So on our floor plan, on our floor plan, we show we show the actual opening. But when we're doing our framing, we obviously have to add, you know, two inches for the rough opening of the door. So that's pretty cool. These others are just open. This is just going to be a place to hang some clothes. The thing is about this addition, I guess the building inspector isn't going to watch this, <laughs> is that this is going to be a mother-in-law suite, but they don't have a septic tank to support five bedrooms. So this has to be called uh, an office. Uh, we can't. They can't call it a bedroom. So. Hopefully he doesn't watch my. I don't think the building inspector is going to watch. And, but in, in any event, uh, all we would have to do is close in a a closet door in the existing house to to get around it. So I'm not that I'm not worried too much about it. So that's that. No comments. Cool. Uh, not cool. If you have comments, let me know. But if you're just joining us, we we're, we're using the Medic wall extension to build these walls and uh, had some problems earlier in the live stream the first live stream with um, the drawing axis which I don't normally like to show because it's uh, kind of annoying to look at but uh, that is your drawing axis your XYZ uh, plane and in this other I had somehow I had I'm going to save this by the way Save as, this is Artisan Construction 2022, it's, and I'm going to name it something else, I'm going to name it Current, and what I'll do is, uh, I'm going to copy in some of that stuff that was in that drawing that got all convoluted this is where I was and let me delete all these 
Oops. I meant to delete the guidelines. So somehow I got the drawing axis screwed up in this drawing. And I think it was from importing all this geometry, this uh, LIDAR. I don't know what it is, to be honest with you, but sometimes this happens and you just have to deal with it. And so when I was trying to draw walls, they, the corner trim wasn't coming on and all kinds of weird things. So what I'll do now is see if I can keep from, well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm not even gonna go there. I'm gonna go back. <laughs> I keep opening up layout for some reason. I'm going to first of all get out of this and then go back to current drawing save changes what the heck I might as well say yes and what we'll do is we'll put the roof on here because it's really the, one of the most interesting things is uh, now I don't know why this wall here is is it the right length 20 foot and a half inch it should be 19 feet 11 update and because this should be right there there you go and if I go to the other end it should be right And I must have typed it incorrectly. 19 feet 11 inches. And we'll grab this. I'm assuming the other end is changed. So I'm going to go back. Make sure. Well, we're not going to go there for right now. What we're going to do now is work on the roof. <laughs> so all of the all of that is uh my air it's how i snapped whenever i was placing the walls but again that's based on the way i like to do my floor plans the way I, the thickness i like to show on the floor plans it has nothing to do with the extension so we're going to go to truss roof trusses this is the roof truss or the roof yeah the roof extension because uh, you can do rafters with it too we're gonna, I'm going to propose that we do trusses on this so it can be a clear span. And we have to match one of the things about this um, subdivision. We, we have to kind of match the roof that's there. So we can't be doing anything kind of funky. So I'm going to select the framing. You know what I want? I should have done. I should have. Let me go back and select the. No, that's correct. I'm sorry. That is correct. I want to check. I want to choose the framing, the framing line, which is right there, and then go to right here, and then we will go to here. You don't you don't want to go to here because the roof extension is going to add sheeting, and it would be hanging over. So we're going to use 412 overhang I think I think we're at 16 inches on the overhang I need to check that but again it's easy to change and we're gonna do okay and then we're gonna see yeah 30 feet is correct yeah 24 inch gable interests okay so what gable interests are is I can say yes and I'll show you when this comes up in a second uh, yes roof options yes because we want our decking and all this and for now I'm just going to say save and our roof should pop up hmm okay we're just going to say okay and then we're going to bring our trusses up and then I'll find out what I did wrong, which apparently is weirdo, weirdo, weirdo. Not sure how all these got over here, but again, this is the way it's going for me today. <laughs> Maybe I should have just taken off this weekend. <laughs> but it's it's you know what it is is. When I started to place it and then I didn't, 
I must have accidentally clicked out here and it placed it there and then when I said okay it created both of them but the thing is what you can do is go in here and edit this and we're going to turn on our advanced options which will give us roof sheeting which is correct 7 16 OSB and where's our overhang we have outlookers yes I like structural outlookers yes I'll show you, show you what that means in a minute uh, where's our overhang over gable overhang okay and then our overhang on each side is probably Roof returns, soffit cut, cable wall cladding, yes. Okay. Fascia, yes. I'm just going to update this for now. And then I need to do, sometimes depending on your monitor, the way it's set up, you'll have to do this full size to get, if there's lots and lots of options. Uh, so what I want to do go, is go back here and select roof cladding is turned off for some reason, maybe. Uh, roof cladding. Roof cladding. Roof advanced options, yes. Roof. Roof cladding. Roof cladding, yes. Okay. Let's try should just be any old charcoal gray update oh maybe a layer thing let's go see if our roof cladding is turned off for some reason yep there we go I had the roof layers turned off so let's grab the roof layers and put them in my roof folder there we go that's why our framing wasn't showing up and so here what we need to do is change our we're going to edit this and we need to change our gable wall cladding yes and so for some reason my gable gable wall sheeting yes okay let's update that that should help yeah there we go and for some reason my gable interests didn't take i must not have updated that yes and i want this to be not heather moss i want it to be my lap update that's correct. Now I'll have to play with the uh, offset a little bit. You see how this siding is not lining up with that siding? That's four and a quarter, and this is seven. I think what I can do is put a vertical offset on this to uh, fix that. If I can't do it in one, one try here, I'll do it later. I just want to show you that you can do it. I might have to play around with it a little bit. So that would be two and a half inches. 2.5. Let's see what that does. Almost. But you see how you can kind of play around with it inch and three quarters to get it to where it doesn't look funny. <clears throat> I may have done that in the wrong direction. Let's do, let's do this. What is that? Yeah, that should have been, oh, three inches. Edit wall, let's go to vertical. Vertical offset, let's try three. And then if it doesn't work, we'll do minus three. Yeah, we'll do minus three. Aha, that's that's good. You see, we want that siding to be 
just a smooth and it's still not perfect but I'll fix I can fix that later I just wanted to show you that you can adjust the siding on the wall um, to line up with your siding in the gable now let's um, we need to put a floor on here but I was having a little trouble with that earlier because I went to my Medic extensions and do we have any let's see so when you're done with all of this is that what you give the building inspector for approval yes um, well not not actually the model the model is a tool so when I get this all done and I've got the the foundation and everything drawn I'll set up views right I'll set up views for elevations and because there's the you know the back the side the, that side that side and I'll set up drawings but this will be I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in as a matter of fact I think I may try it now um, the other thing I normally do is you see how SketchUp is bad to let the studs bleed through. When I, when I start to do my uh, elevations, I go into my wall folder and I'll turn off wall framing, you know, like that, so that all you see is siding. And I'll also give this glass a, a, some opaque value that um, I do is I select it and then I'll edit I'll go down here to opacity and I'll change it so that you can just barely see inside you know that you can see through it kinda but you don't see everything right. you want it to look like glass but not you know you don't want to see all the framing and stuff uh, or whatever you can turn on the drywall on the inside I usually don't. Well, I do sometimes, especially if the owner asks me to. But um, let's fix this right quick because it's bugging me. Edit. Go down to wall. Vertical offset. Minus three. Yeah. And I'm going to... Then the bottom offset will be... Let's see. Where is it? Vertical offset. Horizontal offset. Actually... This is going to end up having to go down like 11 inches. Uh, that would be at the bottom. And you're not seeing that because... Let me delete this. Let me delete this. Uh, what did I do? Edit wall assembly. So what we want to do is vertical cladding. Okay, here we want the, the bottom to be 11. Okay, because it's going to lap down over. It's going to lap down over the floor uh, framing, so it'll look something like that. And then, you know, then you can kind of play around with the vertical offset to get it. The vertical offset let's see if it's three if the uh, minus three will work to get it lined up with the gable nope anyway I don't want I don't want to bore you with that anyway there through all of these parameters you can fix it so that it's working right for you edit wall assembly and what I'm gonna do here is change this to 11 that should get me down past my my floor framing and that line you're seeing is the floor plan edit 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 like that this should be wall cladding offset 11 
I just want to get all my. Uh oh. Oh man, why me, Jesus? Why me, Jesus? I just had a bug splat. I have a feeling that I should have just not. Uh, let's see, that is 1234. Yeah, this is the newest. I should have not been playing with that. There we go. Yeah. So what I want to do is I want to turn off the walls and the roof right now. And what I'm going to do is put myself a foundation, a quickie foundation. This should go in the walls. That's the door hardware. So I think for now, since I have uh, made this live stream kind of convoluted, I'm going to just draw this. I'm just going to draw a simple foundation. I think it's going to have to be at least eight foot tall. And I'll show you in just a minute why. And then it's going to be 8 inch block, which is really 7 and 5 eighths. But I thought I grabbed the offset. Well, we'll go ahead and show it at 7 and 5 eighths. What the heck? We'll move dangerously. And then we'll pull that down to here. And if I turn the floor plan off, which this should be in 2D floor plan, to d floor plan, what happened to it? Oh, down here. Okay, you see now I've got a, uh, and I'm just doing this to give you an idea what that might look like now I used to have the floor extension and for some reason but what I'm going to do is draw a I'm going to group this for now I'm just going to draw a mass that represents my floor and I know I'm going to have a, a bottom plate which is inch and a half so that's 1.5 then I'm probably going to have TJIs that will span this whole thing and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to have to use 16 inch uh, wood eye joists so that's going to be 16 I would have to go check the uh, TJI TJI span tables TJI span tables that way I can show you what they are they're just truss joists. They're different companies call theirs. We we call them generically wood eye joists. This company calls theirs truss joists. There where you get the TJI, and they have these different series that have thicker and more beefier webbing on them. So you have to kind of decide what series you're going to use. And normally what I'll do is I'll call up my um, supplier and see what the easiest series is to get but you can see like an 11 7 8 and this 230 series is pretty common it will actually span 19 feet and 10 inches 19 feet 10 inches which is good we don't even have so you look up here oh first you look for your loading 40 10 40 pounds per square foot live load 10 dead load if you were going to have a heavier dead, you know, more of a dead load, like you had a pool table or something, you might want to use the 20 pounds per square foot uh, dead load. But if you came over here, you can see that the 11 and 7 8 still works. That's kind of funny. Uh, that means they're over engineered that much that it'll still work with the heavier live load or dead load at 19 foot 10 at two, this 230 series. Now the 230 series has a web here it is. See the top web, the top cord is 2 and 5 sixteenths wide and nobody really uses these narrow ones anymore. 
this 110 and the 210 because they have an inch and three eighths, inch and three quarters. So uh, nobody really uses those. We've all pretty much gone to this 230 series, which has the uh, 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 that topper, topper. The top cord is wider, uh, and it allows you to nail your floor decking a little easier. So that's the series we want to use. And so I actually don't have to go that high. I can go back down to my inch and a half plate. And why don't we do this? We'll just draw this, which will be 5.5 our rat seal, our mud seal, get rid of that and then I can triple click it, I can make that a group. So now we got our mud seal on there. Now this is what I have to do whenever I don't have my extension loaded and for some reason I don't have the floor extension loaded. So now I put myself another zone in there and this will be the rim board. So this will be the 11 and 7 eighths. Oops, wrong button, Tony. 11 and 7 eighths, 11 and 7 eighths. You can see the dimensions I'm typing in right down here in the bottom corner. Now the rim board for the wood I joist are, is one inch thick. That's the one I like to use. So I'll come in here and go one inch and then I'll pull this down to get rid of that and then I'll double click all of that and make a group and then that gets me my band and I don't think it'll take that long to draw one of these things uh, let's just go down one point I think it's actually inch and a quarter two five and then it was uh, two and five sixteenths I'm going to make it 2.5 just for ease of drawing sake and then I'll copy this down here. This is a good example of what I used to have to do. And then we'll go in the middle and we're just going to show this as a half inch. One quarter. It's really less than a half. but you can see that even looks thick to me but I'm going to draw it that way just for the fun of it okay so now I'm going to copy that I'm going to make a block and I'm actually going to take out the, well first I'm going to make a, a group out of it so I can go in and edit it without having to delete anything you know, accidentally deleting anything like this Okay. Now we're going to move it to here. Well, we're going to do is move it. We're going to copy it over to there first, and then we're going to move this back to here inside our. Oops. Oh, I had it set on copy. Uh, let's see, we want to get it off. Yeah, we want to get it off copy. There we go. Now, there you go. So that's that's that uh, that uh, wood eye joist will span that far. But what we're going to do is put delete guides. We'll come over 16 inches, and then I'll show you something. To look out for when you're building your own house and that is plumbing oops so what we're going to do is let's see 30 times let's see times point it's probably 20 is it 25 of them let me guess 25 we're going to take this and we're going to copy it 16 and then we're going to hit asterisk 25 and that will copy 25 of them across there oh you know what I forgot to do one two three four I only needed 21 
I forgot to make this a component because later on I might want to change it. So we're going to make that as a component. Okay, we'll just call it TGI. And now I need 21 of them. 16 at 21 of them. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the. Well, first, what I'm going to do is make a group of all those. So I'm going to come get, get that one. And I'm going to select these because I don't want to select the foundation below. Okay. Uh, I think the last SketchUp update caused some gremlins. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm getting ready to save this drawing. What am I doing? Make group. I'm getting ready to save it because it's starting to make me nervous. Okay. So now I'm going to turn on my, my floor plan which was down here. I need to put it up in the floor folder. One thing nice about the new version of SketchUp is you have these folders you can create which um, allows you to you know turn off the visibility you know control visibility easily so I'm going to move this floor plan up it looks like we got lucky what you want to do is look for your toilets right so I got pretty much lucky I mean that's almost exactly where it needs to be which hardly ever happens okay because your your toilet drain will be out here 12 inches Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe I didn't get that lucky. <laughs> yeah, it looks like I'm going to be okay, but this this should be at least two inches here. Oh, it's it's at an angle. I get it. Uh, where is it? Yeah, inch and three quarters. We could probably, what I would probably do is adjust these a little bit uh, because you can see how close this one is to the end. We can adjust this back, you know, in, in an inch, or let's just say two. If we're going to move it, you might as well move it two inches. And that way we don't have to worry about the plumber, because honestly, plumbers are cool guys, but sometimes they they will forget and they'll drill, they'll, you know, cut your joist, and you do not want to cut these. You don't want to cut the top or bottom cord of these wood eye joists, okay? Let's make this... Uh, Let's, I'm not going to worry about making those look like joists yet. So let's go back to our toilet. Now you can see now we're going to have good, a good, when, it, when the plumber starts cutting his four inch hole here, you know, either side, we're going to have plenty, plenty of room. Uh, and then what I'll do, since I'm the builder, I'm usually the builder on local, these local projects. When, I, when Paco and I go out and we start laying out the floor, I'll give him the first joist, right? So I'll say, you know, do 12 and three quarters to, and then set ahead. And he'll know exactly. He's been, we've been working together for like 20 years. So he knows what I'm talking about right off the bat. But what you want to do is check everything on your floor plan. I have had, you know, usually you're going to have two bathrooms. So sometimes you'll have to fudge it. You know, one might be really close and then the other my other you know on the other bathroom you might have to move it back and forth to get it just right but that's why it's important to get your uh, to not be like uh, so hung up on your layout being you know 16 inches from the end as long as it's closer to the end it doesn't have to be right because what happens is when you start cutting your Advantec, your subfloor, your first sheet just gets cut to the center of that point. So your first sheet would be cut, uh, what is this? Yeah. You know, seven foot 10. Well, that's right, we moved it two inches. So that's no big deal. Uh, as a matter of fact, you're saving 
you're saving a lot of headaches because if the plumber cuts through this this thing this whole thing's got to be changed if you cut the top cord on this these things are ruined now what I gotta do is get this floor plan to where it's up where it's supposed to be up here and then let's make sure it's on the corner yeah and then it's supposed to be up three more quarters three quarters because now I'm getting ready to put the subfloor down And all this I'm doing kind of in a quick way. On some some of my drawings, I'll I'll lay out the sheets if it's a complicated floor system. But on this, it's going to be it's easy. So it's just a small addition, and there's no offsets in the building or so. Then I'll raise this up three quarters like that. And the reason I do this mainly is to get the elevations the proper height because see a lot of architects don't think about this height distance right here. So the wall doesn't even start for 14 and a quarter inches. And you remember how I wanted to lap the siding down 11? Well, that's when I thought I could use a 2 by 10 floor joist, but I couldn't. So now what we're going to do is turn our walls on. Let's, uh, let's make this a group for, fun, for the fun of it now, just so I can move it all at once. And then we'll turn our walls back on. And you can see... We got to get this Let's see if I can see where to go from here. This right here, this is our that's our top of our mud seal, our rat seal. It'll go right there. Now you can see how the walls are hanging over the framing is this the right is this right and this is what I don't like so I'm gonna fix that I don't like the OSB hanging over I like it to be where the floor is and I thought I had done that I like it to be right there so that means these walls need to be adjusted in length yeah see That's right, one inch, because the uh, we offset the the wall line. We offset it for a floor plan. So, but that's what proper planing does for you, right there. All right, so let's turn the roof back on. Turn the roof back on, like that. Now. And let's turn the wall framing off. Wall framing so it doesn't look weird because it's showing through. And now let's take and put this. I think what I'm going to try to do is use this drawing here as my extension drawing. And then I'm going to put this in a group. The whole thing in a group. That's one thing cool. You can have nested groups. And I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to go back to the convoluted drawing because I'm not sure if I'm going to get rid of it yet. And then I'm going to then I'm going to paste it. You see how the axis is different, the drawing axis, and this is what was screwing up my my thing. First, I want to put a, a reference line for the foundation, the top of the foundation is right there and then I can delete this delete this whole thing because it was just something for a discussion and so now we can take this and we can move it let's see what am I going to do I, I should what I should have done was put myself a Is this perpendicular to that? And then that comes over. We got two feet. Three, four. So that should be, and then it should come out 20 feet. So 
So that should be the top of my foundation right there. I don't know why this is. Looks like I actually had it right. Let's go back and we'll put the, we'll undelete that house for a second. Was it, was my grade really? No. What I'm going to do is put a, a line here. That's what I should have done. And then deleted this thing, this old ugly thing. So now I can put this here. And then I can turn it. Oops. And then set it down in there. Go down. There we go. So right there. And you see, I, I wasn't that far off. I had this roof. So this roof will have to come down. To there somewhere. We'll fix that. And... bugging me so now we know that our siding has to come down at least you know 14 inches 15 inches so what you would do is come in here and oh okay edit hopefully it's not going to freak out because of the extension the uh, drawing axis so cladding bottom offset let's go 15 and see that goes down and covers up that There we go. And then when you do your elevations, you'll you'll be you know you'll turn off your floor plan. Some of the things that shine that show through that line right there, that heavier line is the floor plan. That's showing through the wall. 2D floor plan. Yeah. And it's also the floor that floor seating, see over here. See, it, it, this is one thing that bugs me about SketchUp is, depending on how far away you are, some things bleed through. And I've complained about this for a long time and nobody ever listens. <laughs> so you can see here, our top, our offset at the top was all was different because of the gable wall. So what we'll have to do is go back and fix that to where it's just, We'll have to take that other offset off. Yeah, we'll have to take this off. You see now the courses line up. So probably what I'll do to fix that is I'll draw a trim board. Sometimes we'll put a trim board across here just to make give it some more detail. And that's what we'll do probably there. Our, uh, 
Where'd she go? Where'd she go? Where'd she go? Where'd she go? Oh, I didn't have it. Okay, I didn't have that one set. That's right. All right, well, so that just gives you a good idea of how fast you can draw with the Medic extension. Now, what I would do again, you see how those roof trusses are showing through. You would just go into your roof. When you get ready to print your elevations, you would go in to your roof framing and turn it off and turn off your trusses. See? And so there's just a little bit of work, but what you do is you set up these views up here. And so when I get ready to set up uh, the back elevation, let's say, I would get my view the way I want it, you know, then I would update. And we want to say, we want to update the selected style update. So now that those, the framing's not going to show through. But if I go back to my working view, which is here, the framing would come back on. And so what we would do, and I'll clean up all this stuff, all these extra lines, all this garbage up here. This will all get turned off. This is probably in a layer that gets turned off. Yeah, all this PM, which is that, that extension, all of that gets turned off, except for that. <laughs> And uh, then I'll set up my views. And then I'll go into layout uh, and start setting up uh, the paper, the paper drawings. Let me delete these guidelines. And in the end, you know, all of the color stuff will go away. Um, you know, we don't print all this green grass. I do this just so I can see. The contrast between different surfaces at first like this the driveway the retaining wall and the grass but when I get ready to actually print drawings it'll all be just you know black and white there won't be any color let's see let me look at the questions here uh, didn't see your video oh, okay so when you're done yeah so I am so behind let's see I'm still using cast iron for my septic system uh oh I think I'm a little behind the times I'm feeling a bit out of place with all of this new stuff well I mean as long as uh, uh, that the cast iron would be under your floor right in your basement or whatever <clears throat> your sewer line would either be clay tile or uh, you know PVC <clears throat> the old old even the old you know I've, I've renovated some hundred year old houses and even they would have you know clay tile <clears throat> and the cast iron would typically be as part of your house plumbing system not the sewer uh, system <clears throat> I think I've lived in the wood a bit too long. <laughs> yeah, I have a, uh, it cost me about, what, six grand to get my uh, septic tank in out here in, in my tiny, you know, on my property for my tiny shack, which, which was about a third of the cost of the whole project, you know. But, and part of that was because we dug down about four feet and hit rock and uh, which the soil scientist told me we were going to hit because he was a, he was a good guy and he knew what he was doing the, but the thing is the soil that he was concerned with for the field lines is only you know the field lines are only two foot deep so if there's as long as there's a good barrier of dirt under the field lines to that soil which there was so there was two feet of earth for drainage under that field line down to that earth I mean down to that rock it didn't matter for the field lines we just had to go down uh, the six eight feet for to get the septic tank under the ground um, yeah the of course I don't like the plastic tanks um, that was for a concrete tank I'm still an old-school guy I like the concrete tanks because 
you don't have to worry about them floating out of the ground. <laughs> I've seen I've seen plastic tanks. You'll if you don't fill them up full of water when you install them, they will they will come out of the ground if if it rains. Right. Uh, I wonder if there's even a picture of that plastic septic tank uh, floats out. Let's see if I can just do that. Uh, floats out images. Yeah, I see this. See, it's kind of it's not funny, but uh, if you don't, here's even a concrete one that they're having to float. Now, I've never seen this honestly. I've never seen a, set, a, a concrete tank do that, especially if you cover it up. But a plastic tank, uh, if you don't fill it full of water, and uh, before you bury it, and you get a and you get a heavy rain, it'll 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 float out of the hole. So I don't like the con I don't like the plastic tanks. But thankfully, this one has. Where's my site plan? I've already set up this view. Um, I'm going to turn off the axis. This is why I don't like the drawing axis turned on. Where's my styles? I need to update that. Yeah. So here, you see our site plan. Here's the new addition. And the septic tank is over here. And the field line goes down here. And this is the property line we're going to have to abandon. We've already got the surveyor lined up to come out. They own both of these pieces of property. And so we're going to have to abandon this property line before we can build the addition. Uh, we won't be able to get a permit with this crossing the property line like that. And this part is the, the part that's kind of with this hatch, angled hatch, is uh, the new, I mean the existing house. And then this is our addition. And then we're going to ex we're going to extend the driveway down beside it, so her mother-in-law can park here. And then we'll have our little roof. So, but I think what I'm going to do is I'll probably keep all this stuff here because I like being able to show them. Uh, put this back on perspective. Yeah. I like being able to show them where's my work where's my work right, let me see if I got yeah so anyway I need to set up my views you see I set it on uh, work and so the roof was turned off I need to turn that back on I need to turn the I don't like the wall framing being on while I'm working because it drives me crazy seeing it through the wall and then roof framing is off truss is off yeah and then I just update that work work one and really I usually don't work with the shadow zone that was just for our meeting turn them off because it drags down your memory well because the computer has to render render those so I'm gonna update that so now I can just use that working view and uh, go from there now the deck is kind of weird um, the deck the steps right now are going off the deck on this end but we're going to have to put this little roof connector on here because we can't just have the addition without it being connected to the house but you can see I've got the door coming out it's going to be moved over yeah I haven't got this located exactly right yet. Um, should be uh, here. Oops, I don't want to move the whole house. <laughs> Just wanted to move that roof. Let's see. Let me get closer here so I can see what I'm doing. Let's see. Is that yeah? that right where's my red axis I think what I want to do is just move it I'm going to draw myself a reference line for some reason I can't snap to the corner there oh I see what it is so I want this to be 
lined up with this and then plus a foot. 12. Well, that should get it closer. I'll have to check it. Yeah. But anyway, I just really wanted to do a, a video about the Medic extensions uh, and how much quicker you know this is. Because I literally, honestly, I like showing the framing because if, if my framing contractor and I like to have something to talk, talk with, talk about. Let's see. I need to put these roof. For some reason, I gotta get these uh, roof sheeting goes. Well, roof frame should be here. Let's close this one. And the roof sheeting should be in the roof folder. And I know what I did. I, I created these layers after. And then what's left? Door hardware should go in the wall. And what's this basement? What? What is that? Oh, I don't think that's what I need. I think I can delete that. No, I guess I can't. All right, anyway, I'll have to organize these. What you really want is just your folders, and I number them so they go in sequence. So, so I should be able to just turn off the, yeah, that way, and then I can, if I turn back on the wall framing, then I can talk to my framer about how these things get framed. And... Okay, I think that is enough damage for one day. <laughs> but I just really wanted to show how easy it is. Let's go to our work view. Yeah, that way our framing's turned off. How easy the, the extension is to work with and how, you know, how much further along you can get, you know, not having to draw windows or doors. It's not that you have to, it's not that drawing the windows and doors is a pain, in which it is. It takes time. But cutting them into the wall automatically, you know, just placing them and boom, the, the siding gets cut around them, the framing gets cut, you know, installed around them. That's the that's the awesome part. So now I'm going to go find out. I'm going to send uh, Nathan a, an email and uh, find out what, how I'm going to get my floor extension back because uh, I deleted it and anyway that's a long story let's see if there's any final questions here what were you perking at for drainage uh, I actually forgot to be honest with you um, but I, I, it took me a year to find this property uh, and the main reason was I wanted to be up here on this this particular mountain and but all the properties I kept finding the 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 soil guy the the guy for Sequatchie County who's over the soils you know stuff the septic tank stuff would he he's he like knew every piece of property that I looked at I don't know how this guy he must have been born and raised in Sequatchie County but I would say, hey, how about this one? He'd say, too rocky, too rocky. And you really don't want to get into a situation like that uh, because you could end up spending thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 on a septic tank system. If you have to do like a mound system, you know, where you have two tanks and pumps, and it's really, it's a mess. So I kept looking and looking. It took me a year, basically, to find this piece of property. And God bless Barrett. He would he would go around to all of them. We walked all over properties, all over this mountain, <laughs> and finally found this one. And thank God it had a soil map, and so I placed the septic tank right in the middle of the property. Right, in, it's four acres. There was a spot that had perfect soil except for that rock down at six feet, four to six feet. 
Now see, up on this mountain, you'll normally have rock like right at the surface. And you can't, you know, obviously that's not going to fly for a septic system. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, and I, I think I, I got lucky because the, Back in back when I bought this property, it was only about ten thousand an acre. Uh, well, it was twelve thousand an acre. Yeah, it was fifty thousand for for it was a little over twelve thousand an acre. But now, now the prices have gone crazy. You know, you pay sixteen, seventeen thousand dollars an acre up here now. So I got lucky. All right, guys. I don't hope that didn't bore you all too much. Thanks, Kurt, for watching. And um, uh, if you're a SketchUp user, check out Medique's uh, extensions. Uh, Nathaniel is just such a great guy. He's an engineer, um, but he loves you know loves SketchUp like the rest of us do. And let's see, log in, silly. So here's his page with the extent, the plugins here. And for some reason, my license is up. Oh, my license is out for the floor extension. I had it, my license was correct on the, the foundation, the walls and the trusses and the electrical. Uh, but so I'm going to go work on that. But, um, I think I may propose this roof to be a little steeper, even though it's supposed to match the existing one, because this addition isn't really that interesting. So we need to do something to give it some more character somehow. I'll have to work on that. But this is just the first go at it. So I'll go, I'll meet with the owner, we'll talk about it, and see what we can do to spice it up a little bit. The bad news is, too, they also want. They also want us to match the siding like in other words since it's and this is why I don't buy lots I don't buy property in a subdivision because your subdivision rules or restrictions are going to be a lot more restricted than just you know individual properties you know outside of a subdivision but they want this they want us to have the same siding the same roofing you know they'll probably want shutters <laughs> on the windows which I, I don't like and um but you know it's it's uh you know it'll be back here do I have a better picture you can't really you won't be able to see it that that easily it's got these big trees it's hiding it so I probably shouldn't worry about it that much yeah it'll be it'll be set right back in here all right, well, that is all for today. I'm going to try to clean this up, which is the boring part, and um, go from there. But thanks, guys, for watching. I appreciate it. Oh, there's Richard. Richard's there and all here. <laughs> Richard's coming to visit me next week on Tuesday. So we're going to have some live streams. We're actually going to be working on his cabin, playing some. Maybe we'll do that live. And uh, we're going to have a range day. We're going to be shooting machine guns. It's going to be cool. So i um, excited about that. And uh, that'll, that'll, we'll make a few videos on that. It should be fun. Oh, sorry, Richard. You got here right at the end. <laughs> i got to go work on something else. I'll uh, I'll see you guys